Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It's time for Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. Thank you for joining me today on Faith to Live By. This is Sue Taylor. We are continuing our study this week on the conscience. This study has really helped me in areas that I needed help in. We have learned from Scripture that there is the good, the pure, the evil, the defiled in the seared conscience. Of course, God, we know, wants us to have a good and pure conscience. And we do when our hearts have been sprinkled from an evil conscience by the blood of Jesus. The conscience, we've learned, also has served, has several functions. It serves as a witness, an accuser, or convictor, and it also functions as an upholder of the faith. Today, I want to continue with the functions of the conscience because it also functions as a server of good. In Romans chapter 13, Paul instructs us to submit to government authority. Verse 5, Paul tells us, Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. Paul is asking us to submit to rules of government for two reasons. Number one, to avoid punishment that the law of government can execute on us for doing wrong. And the second reason would be for submitting to government, for submitting to governmental authority, is to maintain a good conscience. Our conscience is a server and is to be a server of good. When we listen to it and when we are going down uh, the freeway, say doing 85 miles an hour when the speed limit is 70, and that little voice of our conscience tells us we should slow down, it's for our good so that we don't get a $125 speeding ticket. If we would do a conscience, what I call checkup, how many times would we remember hearing that still small voice saying, slow down, you're breaking the law, or don't repeat that gossip, or don't listen to that dirty joke? On and on we would go. Proverbs says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts. We are without excuse, excuse, brother and sister. God has given us our conscience as a barometer and a megaphone to the Holy Spirit in which he uses. Not only does our conscience function as a witness, accuser, an upholder, and server of good, but also a source of joy. In 2 Corinthians 1.12, Paul boasts in his sincerity of following Christ. He says, For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God and more abundantly toward you. Paul can boast of his integrity because his conscience bear, bore witness to the fact that his conduct is characterized by simplicity and godly sincerity. Therefore, he has nothing to feel guilty about as he stands before God's people. He has not stooped to worldly, fleshly methods of men in the world, but he has acted openly before all men, boasting in the grace of God which was given him and the strength to do so. No wonder his conscience could be a real source of joy to him. He lived above board. His life was an open book. I really believe also another function of our conscience is to remind us that we can be dead to sin. Since Jesus Christ, it says, once offered himself and did what the law could not do, we can and should live with the idea that our conscience is to be dead to sin. Hebrews 10, 1 and 2 tells us, For the law having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, 
can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect for then would they not have ceased to be offered for the worshipers once purified would have had no more consciousness of sins for in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins every year for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Brothers and sisters, did you hear this great word of God? The blood of Jesus Christ has once and for all cleansed our conscience to such a degree that it should be dead to sin. These sacrifices offered year after year could never give the people, the, wor the worshipers of God, a perfect conscience as far as sin was concerned. The Israelites never enjoyed the consciousness of being cleared forever from the guilt of sin. They never had a complete rest of conscience. We do who believe and have accepted Jesus Christ as our once and for all sin bearer. We have such a mystery, as Paul says, in the New Testament. We have something that the, the, the believers in the Old Testament did not have. Oh, we may mess up, but all we have to do is confess up. And our conscience is in good standing once again with the Holy of Holies. If this does not make you shout for joy, beloved, then as they say in the deep south, your wood is wet. Praise God for a dead conscience to sin. And because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and for me. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Sue Taylor. If you would like to write with your comments, or to request a copy of this program for an $8 donation, write Sue Taylor, 10827 Highway 86 East, Neosho, Missouri, 64850. Sue Taylor is a member of the KNEO team and a keynote speaker at several church and women's events throughout the four-state area. To book Sue for your next event, contact Sky High Radio at 417-451-5636. Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster. 